Lastly, we would like to have a Q&A session by the CFO. The presenter is uh, Mr. Mitsuaki Nishiyama, the CFO. So as the last session, we would like to entertain questions on the overall business. Any questions? Question. I have two questions. So the material for the financial results briefing, uh, you had work target in the year that just ended, 8.5%, and this fiscal year, 10.3%. And in that material, based on the definition, the adjusted operating income ratio is not that different from last year to this year. So that means that the injected capital comes down by 1 trillion yen. So ROIC, 10.3% target, includes the transaction. So ROIC calculation. So first, let me straighten out the numerator and denominator. So numerator, this is business profit. No pad. So operating income after tax. And the affiliated uh, income profit loss uh, is included. So that is the ordinary profit. So that's the numerator. And the injected capital on the company wide or sector wide basis, interest bearing debt and the uh, shareholders' equity. At the beginning and the end, average of the beginning of the end of the year. So that's the denominator. And therefore, from 2018 to 2019, the improvement is the improvement in the business profit. That's the big part. And injected capital, of course, increases but business profit improvement is the big component, and that is why uh, uh, it increases from 8.5 to 10.8 percent. So the uh, adjusted operating income ratio does not change that much. That's my understanding. Answer. So the numerator and denominator. In 2018, 467 billion. That's the business profit. That's the NOPAT and the equity method gain and loss. And denominator is the injected capital. Uh, that is 5.491 trillion yen. So that's 8.5%. And 2019, business, business profit, 633 billion. That's the numerator, business profit. And denominator is 6.164 trillion yen. So that's 10.3%. Thank you very much. Question. My second question is about the new midterm plan, the shareholder return. At the beginning, President Higashihara said that CapEx and shareholder return in the previous midterm plan was 1.6 trillion, and the new midterm plan will increase to 1.8 trillion. But it didn't seem like CapEx will increase, so I thought that shareholder return will increase. The payout ratio target, do you have any target? Answer, I would like to refrain from mentioning numbers, but compared to the previous midterm plan, shareholder return we want to increase shareholder return. Uh, CapEx will not increase significantly. We will re remain the same level for a CapEx. So compared to the previous midterm plan, we want to increase the shareholder return. 
Do you have any image for payout ratio? I want to refrain from saying anything clearly. But originally, we said the range is between 20 to 30 percent. Fiscal year 2018, the profit after tax was extraordinary. So uh, we wanted to have the uh, higher range. Any other questions? Question. This isn't directly relevant to your plan, but right now the yen is strengthening. What are your thoughts about this appreciation of the yen? Foreign exchange volatility continues to be high. How do you intend to hedge against this volatility? Any thoughts? Answer. For an exchange, obviously, it is impactful. The dollar changes by one yen, then our operating profit will have an impact of 3.5 billion yen. Euro changes by one yen, then the impact is 1.5 billion in 2019. This is the exposure of foreign exchange changes. But foreign subsidiaries, translation, financial results translation is what is impacted. So rather than hedging against these changes, overall, for the group, of course, this is something that we need to watch closely. But until now, what we have been doing our service business that we have been promoting. With, as a result of foreign exchange changes, revenue volume or demand relationships, whether there is any negative impact, we want to overcome this so that we can proceed with local production, local consumption. That's been what we have been doing. And we want to provide service and solution business so that we not be dictated by the changes in the economy. And that is what we will continue to do. Any other questions? Question. I have one question. President Higashihara's material said 2.5 trillion yen for further growth and 1.8 trillion yen for capex and shareholder return. On the other hand, in today's explanation, in IT, growth investment is 1 trillion, and in life, 300 billion. Industry was 500 billion, although not official. So these different numbers were displayed. So this probably includes or excludes CapEx. I think the definition is different. So once again, from CS CFO's standpoint, could you explain how you plan to use money for each sector? Answer. What you probably want to know is how much money we will use for acquisition. And you want to isolate that out. So when we say investment, there is acquisition, M&A, investment. And as mentioned a few times in today's presentation, the operating expense, OPEX type, and CAPEX. So smart life is mainly CAPEX. Therefore, in growth investment, M&A acquisition 
in, as Shiotsuka-san said, in IT sector is around 800 billion yen, and in energy, 1 trillion yen for power grid, acquisition, and interloan, borrowing, so total 1 trillion yen, and industry, as Aoki-san said, is maximum 500 billion yen, and part of that is already one, 150 billion for JR automation. So those are the main components. And all in all, 2 trillion to 2.5 trillion. Thank you. Next question, please. Question. Two questions. The first one. You talked about shareholder return earlier. ROIC oriented management, investment, and the cost and return. There is the dividend payout ratio, but share buybacks would yield the highest return. I think there is going to be more and more of such discussions from the perspective of the CFO. What do you think about investment and shareholder return, dividend payments and share buybacks? What, is, what are your thoughts? What's your viewpoint? Answer, share buybacks is also part of shareholder return. That's our view. So together with dividend, we're looking at total shareholder return. I think it's worth considering that fully, and that is something that we should consider. And therefore, big investments we intend to make in this midterm plan, investment and operational R&D, CapEx, operational investments, and M&A, investment and loans, for growth and shareholder return, total shareholder return, and financial soundness. We need to strike a good balance between these in managing our business. Thank you. Second question, operating margin of 10% or above. That's what you're aiming at in three years' time. In the initial year, you have investments for growth, so 8.5% is a starting point in the plan. The midterm plan is full of content, so first year and the second year, 8.5 to 9. And in the third year, you are planning to make a big harvest, but it's very difficult to envision that. In the initial year, you make investment, and from 8.5% to 10% linear can we paint a linear picture, or is it going to be a big jump in the third year? I want to understand the level of investment and the speed of harvesting those investments. Answer. I would say that operational investment, including R&D and LUMADA-related solution core enhancement, investment into human resources, these are things that we will be focusing on in 2019. But at the same time, cost reduction, process reform in our indirect processes, overhead reforms, such operational improvements. Those are also things that we want to do in 2019, so that in 2020 and in 2021, we could enjoy the benefits of that. Of course, the manifestation of those benefits would tend to be skewed towards the end of this midterm plan period, but at the same time, products, product business, cost reduction in product business, and Lumada business, multiplication by n-fold, 
those are things that we will continue to do. So as you said, is there going to be a linear progression, things that would manifest itself in a linear fashion? And those are, there are other things that uh, the benefits can be emerging towards the end of this midterm business plan period from the latter part of 2020. Well, it's very difficult to exactly tell you how they will uh, manifest themselves. But in 2021, we want to be 10% or above, and gross margin will be 30%, and SGNA 20%. R&D, even if R&D is grown, general operational expenses will be reduced so that it could be contained at 20%. That policy remains unchanged. So we would like to continue to work toward that. Thank you. Any other questions? Question. At the beginning, President Higashihara uh, did a presentation. So I would like you to uh, mention page five in the further investment in growth for investment two to 2.5 trillion and IT energy and industry are the focus areas. So according to what you said in IT 1 trillion, energy 1 trillion and energy 500 billion. And that's total 2.5 trillion. And that adds up. But listening to what was explained in automotive M&A or in mobility, a stretch target was explained. So those extra parts, uh, will this come from Nishiyama CFO's pocket money, or where is that included? If you could give me a rough image, I would appreciate it. Answer, my pocket is very small. Uh, it's like a, a sewn pocket, and sometimes the hole is at the bottom of my pocket. So I don't have much in my pocket. But uh, the adjustment portion is the asset sale. So we can deal with asset disposal. And in each sector, we are mentioning numbers. But overall, there are priorities. So we need to prioritize as we move forward. For example, uh, there are various cases, possible cases. Uh, all sectors may have stretched case. Or if all sectors come with their own wish list, then this amounts to a big investment. So we cannot, we don't have a limitless pocket. So we have to need, have priority. And as we prioritize, one important criteria is ROIC. So one important number is ROIC and the overall Lumada business, contribution to Lumada, and the synergy as the entire Hitachi group. So we consider from those perspectives and prioritize the items. And one more point is time. We may shift the time. Uh, we may raise profit with the asset we have or make money with the asset we acquire. And that business may generate rich cash. Then in the next phase, we may work on the items that are not on the wish list. And there may be some adjustments through asset sale and and the cash and cash equivalents, 800 billion, it's not all at our disposal, but they are in multiple countries. We have 800 billion yen, and during this current midterm plan, we plan to reduce this to 600 billion. So this cash at hand, through reduction of cash at hand and asset disposal, we will adjust and prioritize from overall perspective. Question. So, for clarification, ROIC for each sector against the midterm plan target 
Is it higher or lower? It may be higher or lower, but the ten、uh, percent plus on a consolidated basis is something that you want to commit to. Answer: Yes. Thank you. We have exceeded the time allocated for the session. One last question. Question. Earlier, Mr. Nishiyama, you talked about gross margin 30 percent, SG&A 20 percent. Mr. Higashira said gross margin and SG&A would be managed. Now, in the midterm business plan target from this RR day, gross margin and SG&A targets. In your presentation material, those numbers have been removed. There are two things. Last year, including achievement of the targets, how did you land for the year just year that ended? And over the next three-year period, in each business unit, gross margin and SNG, SG and A, what is the positioning of them as KPIs? Answer. In 2018, overall, I don't have the numbers for each sector, but gross margin was 26.5 percent, SG&A 18.6 percent. Adjusted operating income 8 percent. That was the composition. It wasn't mentioned in the materials by each sector, but we will continue with this. Operational KPI, we gross margin was an operational KPI as well as SG&A, but we will not use them any. It doesn't mean that we will only use ROIC. These are important indicators that we use to manage against gross margin and SG&A, as well as ROA. CCC, we will continue to monitor these numbers as operational indicators. These are indicators that we will continue to watch, as before. But why we have emphasized ROIC is because we want to enhance corporate value furthermore beyond cost of capital. We are going to be very conscious of cost of capital. That is what we wanted to say. We and business leaders wanted to be closer to you, closer to the market. That is why we have emphasized ROIC as our major indicator. But there are also other complementary indicators that we should be using: operational business improvements should be measured by. These indicators. We'll continue to use these indicators. So please rest assured. Thank you very much once again. Thank you for staying us, staying with us for a long time. Thanks to your support. This is the tenth Hitachi IR Day. We started the first IR Day in 2010, and it's our tenth meeting. In the meantime, we received your advice and insights and suggestions, which we learned from. When we started initially, the way we disclosed numbers. This time, we changed the disclosure item segment, but the、uh, social infrastructure segment had everything, and、uh, this was criticized that so many things were inside, difficult to understand. But this time, I hope it's easier for you to understand, and this is thanks to your effort and your involvement through our dialogue. We try to be as close to the market as possible. With investors and analysts and stakeholders, we try to look from the same perspective and develop strategy and implement them. We hope to keep the same stance with your support. So I ask you for your support. Thank you very much again.